Hello, my name is Sarah Jones and welcome to my first official YouTube video. In this video, I will be teaching you how I make my corset waist belts. Now, if you're not really interested in making it, but you're kind of in love with it, you can find these on my website at sarahjonescouture.com or in my Etsy shop at Sarah Jones Couture. But if you're willing to give it a go, please stick around and watch this video. If you have any questions or if I left out anything, please feel free to comment and I will help out where I can, but let's get into it. This corset right here is really one of my favorites. I love this fabric. Unfortunately, I only had enough of it to make one and I had to make a pretty small one. This is an extra, extra small and is still available in my shop if you like it. But because of this one is why I bought the faux embroidered fabric that we're gonna be working with today. And I definitely plan on making more faux embroidered corsets and everything else because I just love the fabric. It's, it's really great. The pattern for the corset waist belt is four pieces. This corset is a little bit different because you will be opening it at center front. So our back piece is on the fold. I've folded this over so I have a nice pretty little flower sort of centered on the center back so that that'll be a nice cut. You lay out your pattern pieces and cut them. There will be two of each since this is folded over. One thing I want to mention about directional um, fabric, obviously my flowers are all facing up right now, so they will be going the right way when I cut them. And I can show you on the other side, they are still going the right way. That's because I folded my fabric from left to right, right to left. If I were to fold bottom to top, you'll see now that my flowers are upside down. And on this way, this side, they're right side up. So you just wanna pay attention when working with directional fabric that you do fold over your fabric properly so that everything's going the right way. It's not a big deal if you mess up, you'll just waste a little bit of fabric. Lay out your pattern pieces so they all fit. I'm not using very much fabric for this, which is great. You wanna create as le least amount of waste as possible. And then we have our lining fi fabric, which is just a white cotton. So it's pretty simple. I'm gonna cut this out and get it ready to build the corset. Once we have all our pattern pieces cut out, it's time to sew them together. I'm going to be using a half inch seam allowance for this, so I'm going to sew all the main pieces together and all the lining pieces together. you're done stitching all your corset pieces together make sure you are pressing your seams on both the main fabric and the lining fabric after I finished pressing I sewed my seam allowance down on my lining fabric there's no video of that here unfortunately it was a bad angle and then after that I took my main fabric and sewed where my seam allowance will be to help me line up my boning pieces for later For this corset, I am using half inch or two and a half centimeter wide plastic boning. Plastic boning is really simple to cut. I just use a pair of old fabric scissors. We're going to use the 
stitch line that we made for our seam allowance to help us determine the length of our boning. We want to keep our boning about an eighth of an inch to one centimeter away from the seam line. We're also going to have boning down the center front. So we'll have it right along the seam line. We'll have grommets and then we'll have another line of boning. Here's a sample piece I made. We have the boning, the grommets, and then another line of boning. These grommets are six millimeters or number zero. There's about a half inch space between each boning. When you sew plastic boning, you're gonna sew right along this line right here. You're not gonna sew on the rivets. So right along the side and that's how we catch the boning. We're going to start stitching the boning onto our corset. One thing that I wanted to mention is that when I stitch the boning onto my corsets, I stitch it so that the curved side of the boning will be resting up against the skin. So if this was my body, it would curve against my skin rather than placing it on that way. And then if you put it up against your body, the boning is going to poke out. So you want the curve to go towards the skin. I needed to show you the previous video so you could know which way the boning lies on the body so that when you do go to cut it, you cut it the appropriate way because it will be angled especially at the center front. So here I am marking my boning just with a pencil. I'm keeping it about an eighth of an inch from the top seam, the bottom seam, and the front seam. And then I just burn the edges a little bit and I cover them with masking tape. You probably don't need to cover them with masking tape if you burn them. It's just an extra step I take to ensure that the boning doesn't puncture through the fabric. I am just numbering my boning to help keep it in order. This is really helpful if you're not able to leave all your boning laid out on the table while working. I'm going to continue cutting my boning the same way for all of these pieces. However, after I cut the first center front boning piece, I'm going to lay it back on. I did it the wrong way, it's upside down, but I'm gonna lay it back on and measure about a half inch from the edge of that boning and make a little mark in my seam line, in my, in my extra seam where it'll get cut off anyway, of where I want to start my next boning. So I made my mark and then I'm gonna measure my second strip of boning and keep it again an eighth of an, in of an inch away from the top and bottom seam bottom seam excuse me and cut and proceed burn it put masking tape on it and move on so that's what I'm going to do for the rest of this take and I'm going to speed it up very fast because it takes a little bit When you put your second row of boning in that's sort of going to house your grommets in the middle, use that line that you marked in the seam allowance to line up your boning. So I'm going to line it up with that line, get it pretty close, get my stitch started, catch that, and then you can see down here my other line, and I'm just going to keep it straight as I sew. Keep lining it up with that line. Okay. 
So now I'm working from 10 to one and I'm on eight and you're just gonna do the same thing for all of the bonings. You're going to, when you get to somewhere where you have a seam in the middle, like right here, I just like to line up my boning right so that that seam is right in the middle. And I just watch it, I don't pin it, I'll lift it and look and just sew as I go and just try and keep it, keep that seam nice and centered on my boning. And that will give us pretty stitch lines on the front. I'll show you in just a minute. After stitching all the boning on, I'm going to take my lining fabric and just line up the ends together on each end and we're going to sew them right sides together. Then I'm going to turn it out and line up all my seams. Okay, so I took this over to my other machine real quick and I just top stitched right along here. And what I did was I was top stitching the seam allowance to the lining. And what that's gonna do is when you fold it over, because it's going to be like this, it's gonna hold that, that lining nice and snug over there so it doesn't roll over to the front. So I'll press this even though it already looks really good as is. So next what we're gonna do is we're going to line up our seam allowances, or I'm sorry, not our seam allowances, but line up our, well, I guess our seam allowances or our bonings, line those up, put a pin in, and then we're gonna go all the way around and stitch these together, just so we can get this corset held together quite nicely. Okay, so now we're gonna go around and we're gonna pin all of our seams together. So we have this seam right here, right there, and this one right here. They should line up pretty neatly if your pattern's done properly and your measurements are correct. And so we're just gonna pin every single one on the top and the bottom. And then I'm gonna go around and stitch right around, right on top of my seam, al seam allowance stitch. So that I'm connecting the two pieces. Now we have our corset pinned right sides together. We smoothed out our corset when we pinned it so that when we sew along our seam allowance, there's not gonna be any bunches on the lining. There's not gonna be any bunching on the main fabric. We, it's nice and smoothed out. We put our pins in. We lined up our seam allowance lines or our boning lines. So everything's nice and neat. So now all we're gonna do is we're going to stitch the top and stitch the bottom. Remember our center front is stitched. We already did that. And then we stitched our lining. We stitched the seam allowance to our lining to keep that nice and tucked in. So now we're just gonna go around and stitch wrong sides together. And this is just gonna hold our corset together so that we can add our binding to the top and bottom. Now that I have my corset waist belt all cleaned up, I snipped any stray threads and I finished the edges with pinking shears. I have my two strips of binding. These measure about an inch and a half wide and they are the length of the corset waist belt. We are going to sew these on 
right sides together to the top and the bottom of the corset. If you're using directional fabric, make sure you pay attention to which way you put it on so that when you sew it that way and flip it down, your flowers are gonna be facing the right way. It's gonna be a really small amount that's gonna show, but you still want it to be going the correct way. We're still gonna stitch along our seam allowance line, and rather than stitching it this way and not being able to see, I mean, of course you can use your sewing machine as you do to stitch a fourth an inch or however much seam allowance you need. I prefer to stitch it this way. So right sides together still. Make sure you leave plenty of room on the ends. And I'm just gonna line up my corset with the edge of my binding piece and stitch right over my line. So it'll make it a lot easier to see where I need to sew. And as you can see here, my machine missed some stitches, so I will fix that when I sew on the binding. So we'll do that to the top and the bottom. And then once we do that, we're going to fold it over, press it, fold it over again, and I will show you how to get it all nice and neat onto the other side. And rather than stitching it with a machine, I prefer to hand stitch because I just think it looks much more professional and just a cleaner finish. One thing that I want to be sure to point out in this video is that I'm just stitching either right on that seam allowance line or right above it so that I can hide that line in the binding and I don't have to go through and unpick it. So if you're right on it, you can bypass unpicking it so that it's not seen from the front. There might be a few areas where you'll have to adjust, but not adjust, but unpick. But right on top or right above. So we have that. And when we fold it over, you see here, you can see those stitches. That's what we want to hide. So here you can't because I got where I was supposed to be. There you can. So I'm going to go through and just pick these so that it's nice and clean because I'm crazy <laughs> and I need it to be neat. But if you were to stitch right above that, if you stitched right above that line. There's the line. There's the white that was our seam allowance. There's the, the nude color that I just stitched. I stitched right above it. And it's hiding it for me. It's hiding that other line. After I finished sewing on my binding, I took it over to the ironing board and pressed it. I pressed it nice and smooth on this side so that it's right up against that seam line and I folded in the remaining part of my binding. I eyeball it to see how I want it to fold over. It ended up being about three eighths of an inch and we are going to go through and pin our binding in place and then we will hand stitch it. I'll also show you how to get clean corners. I want to talk a bit about how I'm going to be finishing my edges. I have this one pinned here so you can kind of see a new thing that I'm going to try is turning my binding pieces right sides together 
and then stitching right here and I'll actually use a pen rather than pins but I'm just showing you with pins stitching right here with my binding right sides together and then ideally when I flip it out it'll be nice and snug against the edge of my corset um, what I usually do is I would take my binding trim it a little bit shorter and then fold it over and then fold it down but that creates quite a bit of bulk now you can get rid of some of that of course but it looks a bit off when you look at it it kind of goes in and I would really love to have a nice clean side that lines up sort of like that so we're going to try something new with this one and see if it's a good idea or if it's a bust. So let's mark where we need to stitch and let's see how it goes. Okay, so I have it pinned and I'm actually going to sew on this side right here so I can keep it in line with my corset, with the center front of my corset. And then I'm going to trim and turn it out and see how it looks. And I'm probably going to have to move this pin because I do not want to sew over it. We're going to get really close to the edge, but leave room for turning. Okay. Back and forth a couple times. All right. So that's nicely lined up. We're just going to take a chance here. I'm going to leave a little bit just in case I screw up. We're going to turn it out. We'll have to tuck that in. I'll leave it for now, but I'll trim it more. And when I trim it more, this is when the pointy nails come in handy poke out that corner. Well, well, well. I'm going to trim it a bit more on the inside because it did work so that I can make that point come out. So let's try and do that and see what we got. All right. Well, this looks quite good. I trimmed the inside a bit more and poked out the corner. So now we have a nice, neat ending to our binding. And when we flip it over, still looks really good. And we'll just hand stitch right here and we will cover up the stitching that's underneath when we hand stitch. So I'm gonna do the same to the other three corners and then we will start hand stitching. I just finished hand stitching the bottom of the corset and I still need to do the top, but I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like so far. And then I'll show you how I get it started. The ends of the binding turned out looking really good. So now I need to hand stitch the top and I'll show you how I get it started. Fast forward through all the rest and show you how I finish off my hand stitching. I've already threaded my needle and I have a knot down at the bottom. I am going to insert my needle a little bit further over from where I'm going to start. I will tuck my strand in and just sew that into there. So now I have a Good hook on the binding. I do a ladder stitch with most of my binding. It's the easiest stitch for me. And I usually have to deal with this at the beginning. It's always a mess. And I know that my thread is way too long and I should keep it shorter, but I'm not going to. I like it long because I don't want to have to restart, but sometimes I regret it. 
I keep my ladder stitch spacing about an eighth of an inch to maybe half a centimeter. So not too far spaced out. If you leave it too far spaced out, you're gonna get um, spacing between the stitches. And make sure you don't pull, pull it too tight so that it doesn't start to gather. And make sure that you are only catching the lining when you are sewing. So there is nothing showing up on the front side here. Now one thing that I do to ensure that my hand stitching is really secure is every time I get to a line of binding, I knot my thread right at that line or right at that area to secure what I have already stitched. So let's say, you know, something happens with your corset, it gets snagged or clipped or thread gets loose, which isn't likely to happen, but let's just say something happened right here to the corset. Well, if this thread starts coming out, if you don't have a knot or something to reinforce the thread, the whole thing is gonna come undone. So I go a little ways, I make a knot. I go a little ways, I make a knot. And I do that with any hand stitching, but for the corset waist belts, it's just easy to knot at every, um, I think I said binding, but at every boning. <laughs> like, what is this called? At every boning, make a little knot, and all you do is just go into the fabric, I'm going to go in once just to catch that binding there and then make sure before you make that knot that this is nice and smooth because once you knot this you can't pull this tighter or make it looser that's it so this is laying pretty nice so I'm going to go ahead and make my knot and I usually just do it right over that seam I'm gonna pull it snug on the opposite side one more time. Go in this, in the hole, and just make a little knot. And that's it. And then just continue on with your ladder stitch. The binding is all done now. We have a nice clean finish on the inside. No stitches showing. Looks great. So from here, I am going to go press my binding and then we are going to get started on adding our grommets. If you have a grommet press, it'll make it a whole lot easier. I got this off Amazon. Currently at the time of filming this, they're about $55 on Amazon. Worth it for how many I make. If you're only going to make one, not worth it. Um, even though I do have this sample to sort of help me light up my grommets, I am still going to be extra careful. And what I do is I put a pin right in the center of each one, take it out, and then look at it on 
my corset so I can see if it actually is centered. It is a little scary to make this whole entire thing and then your last step is to basically punch a hole into your garment. And if you screw up, you have to remove that entire piece and do it over again. And if you're like me, if it's uneven, it'll drive you crazy. So pull this out gently. And then I just pull all these all the way through so though they're like my little dots on my corset. So I can kind of see where my holes will be. So that actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna move this one over just a little bit and I'm going to mark them with disappearing ink and I will do the same to the other side. After I've marked where my grommets are going to go on my corset, I marked both on the front and the back. I'm just gonna do one side first. I'm gonna punch the holes in this side and then I'm gonna line it up with the other side so I can make sure they're matching up perfectly. I have a hole punch that I use and I almost always use the larger setting and for this grommet in particular, it works well because that is the right size. These can be a pain if you don't know one trick and the trick is get a something that comes in the mail, a thicker piece of paper and use it on the back when you punch your holes into this fabric because then you'll get a nice clean hole. It took me a little while to learn how to use a grommet press, not that it's difficult, but there's a certain amount of pressure that you have to push onto your grommets to ensure that they are secure, but not cracking. So if you push down too hard, you can br break or split the metal. If you don't push down hard enough, the backing part will not stay on. Also, if the fabric is not thick enough for it to have anything to grip onto, so if you're using a really thin fabric, you're gonna have to put a layer in between so that it has something that it can grip. Otherwise, it'll just be, your fabric will sort of just be like floating in between your front and back piece of your grommet. This is two layers of cotton it's fine if I was to use a silk or something that's maybe not weaved as tightly, I would probably put a, another fabric in the center so that it would have something to catch on to, but this will be okay. Um, you put your grommet in the right way, put it upside down onto your grommet press. This has a sort of like a divot in there. The divot goes down, down, like that. I hold mine down and I'm gonna have to like move for a second so that I can actually press this down. Hold it down and just press. And then you have a nice clean grommet. Sometimes it will crack right around here, but that one looks good. I lined up my corset at center front and put the pins through the grommets so I could match up where the grommet locations are for the other side of the corset. I'm just gonna go through and make sure these are lined up neatly. Mark them with my disappearing ink pen, 
put the holes in them again and add the grommets. We are all done. So now all we need to do is lace it up. I usually send two pieces of satin ribbon, two different colors when I sell these. I'm going to lace it up with just the white so you guys can see it with that. But we have a sort of like a mauve color that kind of matches the flowers there. And we have this color here that sort of matches those. I think it'll be pretty with any three of these actually. You're going to need a lot more ribbon than you would expect. I start with three yards and I just cut my ends and burn them to prevent fraying. And we just start by going through the back on one side and on the other side. Untwist and then find your center. All right, so I'm going to um, lace this pretty loosely so that I can get it onto my model and then we will tighten it up. One thing to mention is that I make sure that my ribbon is all going the same way. So from the right, it's going underneath the left on every pass. So it just makes for a neater looking corset. Mm -hmm. 